All right, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our latest job with Joe. Uh, so this morning, we're happy to welcome back Eric Lemetsky, who uh, has been a volunteer here for many years in different capacities, but uh, also does some presentation series. So today, she's going to talk about a long-begotten time, the 1980s, which I really can't say I remember. So I did exist, though. Barely. Barely. Okay. So, uh, Erica, you can take it away. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming to my presentation. And I'm going to talk about the 1980s, which is an exciting decade. And I always think about it in several ways. First of all, as far as news goes, it was the Reagan years. And of course, we had some really interesting political happenings in the decade. But we also had some really fun cultural uh, things going on, too. And I'm going to try to hook them together. <coughs> okay, so starting out in 1980, Reagan was voted in and taken office. And of course, one of the big stories was the hostages got to come home after years of captivity. And then he tried to bring a feeling of hope, all right? So we were just coming out of a recession in the 1970s. And we had the gasoline crisis, and all that was pretty much bubbling over. And of course, there always was that threat of nuclear war. So uh, those phenomena were coming to play uh, during the decade. But people were starting to feel this economic prosperity. And of course, everybody knows the term yuppie, young professional, um, upward mobile person. OK, so this was the thing. You're gonna. Go like almost to the 50s where you had the house with a white picket fence and a two-car garage and a barbecue grill, right? So this was the age of prosperity once again, where you're going to have a modern home, you're going to have a good job, and you're going to have mom working as well. So she's going to be power, right? The power suit came out for the ladies with the big shoulders, right? And everything was... Okay, have enough money to buy, buy, buy. And so prosperity ruled. And then the youth, the younger people, were getting into a lot of new uh, avenues of music and fashion. And the thing with music is they were going toward using technology, which was just starting to blossom. The computer, the personal computer, was going to be a reality very soon, right? And of course they had floppy disk to store all your information on. And then with watching TV, you had the VCR. <laughs> and you could see movies at home anytime you wanted to. We didn't have to wait for them to be listed in a TV guide. I don't have a mobile phone, but the big mobile phone came out, right? It was kind of like weighed almost a pound. So this technology was opening all kinds of avenues of communication and entertainment. They felt that the movies were going to die out because of the VCR. No, I mean, movies were thriving. And there came out some really, really awesome movies. I got a list of them, I'll show it later. But a lot of teenager fun movies like The Breakfast Club, Back to the Future, uh, what else? Gremlins, E.T. Yes. Alien. Yeah, and of course, we were getting back into the space race. Yeah. So we're putting the Columbia Space Shuttle into the air. That was the first time for that. Unfortunately, though, with the space race, we had the challenge of disaster. So a lot of things that come along, I seem to have something kind of go wrong in the, in the process. OK. The cigarette ads were gone. They took them off the TV and magazines. But then the aerobics came out, right? Jane found a workout <laughs> Oh, yeah. I gotta show these if people are watching on the video, too. I gotta watch that, too. And then everybody else. Richard Simmons. <laughs> Sweating to the oldies. And Everybody else has to get on the bandwagon, right, and copy the uh, movement. A pair of leg warmers. These are back in style. Of course, in our climate, they should be in style all year long. 
Okay, food. I'm going to kind of be random because that's the way I operate. I apologize. I'll try to go through the exhibits because I have to show what I've got here. Pepsi. Remember the Pepsi challenge? Oh, yeah. What do you like better, Coke or Pepsi? No blind study they did, right? And then they came out with a new, the new Coke. Oh, they went back to the classic Coke, right? So it's just a reminder that those things were going on too. Fast food was really rocky, and there was places popping up everywhere. People were on the move; they could afford to travel. Gas was getting cheaper, so. The microwave came out. Ah, that's right. Yes. Technology, again, how things have progressed. It was just, yeah, the newest model comes out, go to the mall and buy it, right? And shopping malls were really at their peak of popularity, right? That's where everybody would go. So, again, economy. Uh, unfortunately, with the Pepsi advertisement, Michael Jackson was part of it, right? So he had the fire. Again, that was tragic. The royal family, they had us bound the TV watching the royal yes. wedding. Yes. And there was tons of fascination going on over that. The lady died. I mean, everybody wants to be like her. She was like the Jackie Kennedy, right? Everybody admired her. And then, of course, tragically, in the late 90s, we lost her. So it was something. Tragic happening. Uh, Happy Meal. I believe this came out in the 1980s. McDonald's Happy Meal. Okay, what else? What other fans? Chia Pet. Remember that? I have one. I forgot the brand. Chia. Nice Happy Meal Um Nike. Just do it. And of course, basketball, we had Michael Jordan and uh, Korean at the door. Uh, Magic Johnson, I mean, it was really a golden age of basketball. It was. Football, of course, we had locally Jim Kelly and then Joe Ferguson. But uh, yeah, O.J. Simpson was kind of a memory, but then we'll get into the 90s if you want me to do the program. <laughs> which lasted like forever. The rise and fall. Yeah, quite a story. Okay. Is that Max Headroom? Yes, Max <laughs> Headroom. Yeah, how can I categorize him? He was, a, he was a celebrity and tried to have his own show. and uh, He did a little Christmas song. <laughs> it just, he did the commercial advertising too, didn't he? Yeah, we did that. Yeah, I think he was for, is it Pepsi or Coke? For Coke. So he ties these people in that are going to do the advertising because that's what happened is celebrity endorsements, right? You got somebody who's going to, oh, the jeans, what's that? Nothing is between me and my jeans, Jordash. Yeah. Remember the model? She's doing it over here. Kind of posing. Okay, what else? shoes. Fanny packs? Everybody had one, right? They came back in style. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, they're handy little things, right? All right, toys. The big summer team cabbage patch doll, right? Oh my. And they have little spin offs. Um, anklets. A pair of socks with a cabbage patch brand. Of course, right? That's marketing. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I couldn't see that little bitty thing. Oh, it's, um... <coughs> okay, I'm going to pass it around. There oh, we go. Fun. It's uh, a pair of socks uh, for uh, little uh, girls in the cabinet. Pair of socks. Oh, there are socks. Yeah, so, again, marketing was going wild. Another <laughs> favorite was Elf, the TV show. Oh, uh, great. great. <laughs> I think it was an like alien or something. Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go, alien life form. I knew it had some significance, but see, we're getting back into the space race. You see how culture and history kind of move together. And these things is what keeps people with a common 
interest or, or common goal is that's what binds people together, is something that they all know about. And that's what marketing is all about in a way, is get something that's familiar and push a product. It works. Just like I say, these celebrity endorsements or cabbage patch labeled socks. That, that unites people. And that's what people need, right? So anyways, uh, the space race was beginning to come back again. Better economy, right? You can uh, afford to do this. And people are going to be interested in what's out there. So here comes E.T., right? And then you get little fantasy things like the gremlins, again, this alien form. I would say that that movie, Alien, I don't remember if that's 80s or 90s, but it comes out like, oh. Yeah. That was the 1979's first movie, and they... Yeah, the 80s. They half a dozen movies. They bring one more out, yeah. That's, that's fun. And of course, you've got these teen movies like Back to the Future, again, you're thinking future, now we're forging ahead, we got economy going, and we can do these projects now, right? So people are thinking, oh, into the future. There we go. This gives a lot of um, material to make movies from, and it was fun. All right, uh, <laughs> The Simpsons was one of the first cartoons to appear on TV in the evening that was meant for adults and children both, right? And they're still showing Simpson movies. I mean, it's amazing. Well, still it was so like a real family, right? You know, it's just again, people can relate to it. It's real. It's not something. You know, I can't relate to that. I'm not going to watch it, right? So we get people to enjoy that. Other movies that were a lot of fun were the Nerds, Revenge of the Nerds. And of course, the term came out in the 1980s, right? And uh, Everybody knows who the nerd is. They got the glasses with the tape in the pocket with pens in it. It's the nerds. Okay. Teddy Ruxpin, the talking bear. That was technology, right? You could use a mechanism to make this bear talk. And that was, wow. That was new, really awesome. Uh, Going into the, okay, video games. This is the birth of the video game. 1980, Pac-Man came out. And so the video arcade became a popular place to go. All these neat computerized video games. In the 70s, it was Pong. All right, that, wow, I mean, far today. Radio Shack computer that Radio Shack, yeah, again, that was another. With all the technology coming out, Radio Shack was doing great, right? And new stereos, new systems, right? Then came the boombox. And of course, sometimes on the street corner you'd see the guys out there moving to the music. They had rap music come out, hip hop. And what, what an awesome explosion of hip hop. It just took off everywhere. And I mean, some of what I think is excellent. And the lyrics, well, you know, you got some lyrics that maybe are not for everybody, but there's some other good lyrics that are out there too. They have a message. Now they're in Olympics. Yeah, they have break dancing, which, wow. It's and it's just fun to watch, though. I mean, really, why not make it up and want to go back? Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so. Music just was lively, it was fun, it was very technical. They call it techno pop. And they had groups that come out that well, you'll see out here that some are big into the techno music. And then he had heavy metal, he had kind of a genre. He had girl groups, they were coming out strong, like Cindy Lauper and Go Go's and the Bangles. And then you had some of the, the fellows that were doing the techno pop. Like men without hats, Duran Duran. Yeah, I mean, just amazing. And then you had the groups, heavy metal, the hair bands, their hair was a smoke. <laughs> and they were loud. Van Halen and Motley Crue and Poison. And I, I see that they don't have much.
much music like that now. It's just changed. And I don't know what it is, if these things have gotten super technical, or is it AI that's causing changes to happen? But the 80s music was so lively and engaging and fun, I thought. Yes? One of my favorites was Tiffany. Tiffany, oh yeah. And see, the women were getting empowered now. They had women groups, they had single female uh, musicians. But I remember women were making strides, like Sandra Day O'Connor, first Supreme Court judge, right? And then they got people following Lady Di. What was the other female? Oh, People with Disabilities. Uh, 1980 was the American with Disabilities Act. And Maureen Matlin, she's deaf, starred in a movie called Children of the Lesser God. And there's empowerment now. And then they had a movie about, or a TV series about a boy with Downs called um, Life Goes On. So I mean, they're not using actors to take these parts. They are using people that are, let's say, are experienced this disability, and they're starring in roles like this. And then you see strides made for there. And then you see women. Oh, see out Sally Ride, first woman in the space. So they got really some really good stuff going on where things are changing, but in a nice, steady way without a lot of conflict and revolt. Like the 60s, very turbulent, right? Everybody was demonstrating and it was very conflict, okay? So 80s seemed to be changes that were being made without all that, because they were like open-minded, acceptable of a lot of things. So women had a way to go. I mean, they still had salary uh, differences and things like that, but women were becoming more empowered. And they had that glass ceiling. So in the corporate world, it's still, it might be some difficulties, huh? Well, yeah, because there's been years and years and years of that, and it takes it years always to be change. Yeah. But there are some cracks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, we come a long way to think about it. From the 50s up to the 80s, things are a lot different. Yeah. So that, that's what life is all about, is change. Oh, what else? Uh, there's some good shows on TV. Remember the Wonder Years? Yes. And there was a hint of nostalgia. Uh, in the 70s, they started having happy days of the 1950s. And then people were starting to reminisce about the 1960s. So this show traces the childhood of that time period. So as generations come through, they are going back to their childhood. Yeah. I don't finish your talk. Oh. I didn't mean to interrupt your sentence. Oh, yeah. I, in, I was just meaning I, I would like to talk, but your sentence was interrupted. I don't mean to interrupt your oh, sentence. Yeah, but I say the kids, as they grow up, they go back to the decade that they were growing up, mm -hmm. and that becomes nostalgic. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has kept up with the actress who portrayed Winnie. Oh, yes. But she had a phenomenal scientific and mathematical mind. Oh. And not only did she go way up in the upper reaches of academic, she's also presenting mathematics for uh, young people or any age people in very concrete topics. Oh, wow. And there's Use that in school. Besides the word dyslexia, mm -hmm. L-E-X is word, there's also dys. Calcula, right. which I never knew for 60 years of struggling with that. And she describes everything for us. So if you go to her website, she just, you know, is such a treasure chest for me. Oh, that's good. I didn't know that. I don't really yes. follow celebrities and what they're doing now too much, but there's quite a few of them in the 80s. And of course, there was one thing about the 80s that was kind of tough to deal with was the super slim body and, you know, the Jordache jeans and all these advertisements that show super skinny. It goes back and, to the yoga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not everybody's able to achieve that goal. And there was sort of a focus on that as being um, 
something that women should strive for, but that does create issues with anorexia and eating disorders, which became pretty much that started with Tweedy, though. Oh, Tweedy in the 1960s. And he had that, Kate Moss was the model that kept that going. But it just seems to happen every now and then you get this focus on being thin, which wasn't always realistic. Oh, gosh, what else? Anybody got something that they uh, know that I did not mention yet? I don't want to leave anything out. Walkman. Oh, the Walkman, you know, I have one of those. And I, you know, I got a Rubik's Cube, which was big in 1980. The Walkman came out in 1980, and I have one. I had one years ago, but I also bought another one at a yard sale, and it works. Uh, you can't drive with it because the balance. Never right. Never get the balance straight. Yeah. So. Like a CD version of it, yeah. I do have a, I do have one, but where I put it, I don't know. i got to get my stuff organized, but, oh, big hair. Okay, going back to that, the girls all have the big hair, too. Yeah. Air hockey? Yeah. And you had these things called scrunchies. And of course, you could still wear them. They still in style. And then they come up with these hair clips just to keep that big hair from blowing away, right? <laughs> Characters. Z, the loser, right? The ultimate loser. <laughs> and adorably cute. And Jerry, right? Garfield took off as a comic. Garfield was extremely popular. It still is, but. You know, new, new cartoons coming out. Uh, Smurfs, that's another one. This is a little tiny Smurf battle that I found. Smurf. I got heavy pass those around too because they're small. <laughs> Miniatures. <laughs> My Little Pony, this was in here. Favorite of little girls. And they had the hair again. They got the hair, big hair. Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Ninja. Utah Ninja Turtles. You gotta have Utah. Right? We're, we're going into the space age and we gotta have something that has to do with So the cartoons came out and then a movie came out and I can't remember if the movie was the ladies or the late eighties as Ninja Turtles was hugely popular. Okay. But it was a cartoon first. Yeah, yeah. I mean you had cartoons on them, they made movies. You had pixel movies come out, right? That, the, what was that one that was, um, it was a basketball movie? They had actual movie recordings and they had cartoons in the movie. I believe this is one of the characters. Oh, Who framed yeah. Roger Rabbit? Okay, that, that was a, you yeah, know, Roger Rabbit was a, a big Jessica one. Rabbit. An American Tail with a mouse. Remember that one? Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So much. So Radio Shack, yeah, this is a this is the phone you can get at Radio Shack. And then I have a page from the um, People Make not People Magazine, Reminisce magazine. The page that shows the emerging technology. So come on up and look at that. Oh, a well, Miami Vice. He had a, a car phone. Yes. Oh, wow. Like, Working ahead with the technology. Yeah. And then speaking of Miami Vice, this really set the style for the guys, right? They have a sport coat on with sleeves rolled up, shoes without socks. Oh, yeah, cool. This might be almost a pair yeah. and a moose. Polo shirts with the collar up. Yeah, yeah. And then they had shadow. Right, gotta have a little beard there growing. And I think they have a, a razor you can use, electric razor that cuts off most of it but leaves a little bit behind it. They came out as a as a fashion statement. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. For some reason as I was pulling out of my driveway, I was busy thinking over the three piece suit. Oh yes. And a man told me that it was very complicated because after lunch the three the best of the three piece suit never fit. And oh. it was not considered proper to unbutton that best of the three piece suit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I didn't know that because, of course, I don't wear three-piece suits. Okay, uh, Dallas, a big hit series. And they, oh, they have all these serials on TV, um, Knott's Landing, Dallas, what's the other one, uh, South Beach, no, oh, shoot, uh, California. They had all these people in California, again, these are guppies that are running around in their wealth, right? So movies that show these people with their rich lifestyle. Was it 40-something? Hmm? 40-something? 30-something? Oh, oh, that, yeah, 30-something was a movie that came out, The Big Chill. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, as a decade progressed a little bit, people who did not achieve this wealth that was supposed to be the goal would go back and think, oh, my childhood was so much fun. So you had this kind of bittersweet reminiscence and theme, and you could make movies and TV programs out of it, right? So again, the social changes and the experiences of people as they go through this is, is material to make movies and TV shows out of it. And this is what happens with popular culture, is your history will drive the culture. And sometimes culture can drive the history. Where Star Wars was a huge, yeah. Another one was All in the Family. All in the Family, yeah, yeah was, right. That was, what was it? I thought it would be the 70s. Okay, so yeah, it came out in the 70s as a cutting edge show that showed people saying things that, oh, yeah, really, you know, I wouldn't say that in this company. It just showed yeah. issues. I guess I'm watching me. Yeah, but they had it. It continued into the... But it's interesting to see how the characters of the act is changing culture, too. To see yeah. Because Archie Bunker was different in the 80s. Yeah, because he, he was changes. Yeah. yeah, so the message was these things are happening and we have to deal with them because they're there and we will adapt. And then we show that, reflect that, which is a good message. That's why I watched it. It was right on yeah, right on the edge. And, uh, yeah, so, yes, I'm sorry. When the House on the Prairie also began in the 70s and the early 80s, but it was a very good show. Oh, yeah, and then it came out similar shows, too, like Touched by an Angel, and, oh, yes. what's that other one? Uh, the Road to Heaven, The Road to oh, yeah. Highway to Heaven. Yes. Yes. Michael. Great. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Sometimes culture can influence the history, where Star Wars was a huge hit, right? Everybody knows. And there's from the 70s. But then shows come up in the 80s, like um, Return of the Jedi and things like that, big, huge hits. Well, Reagan, he called his missile system to defend Star Wars, right? So they borrow popular culture to get messages across with things that are happening in the world. And one big thing that was awesome, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. One of the neatest things that happened in the entire world, I thought, is the fall of communism. And then from there, it progressed where we were getting along with Russia, and we shut the Cold War down. Wow. I mean, that really, I think the 90s was a very optimistic decade because that, I think, would drive how people would feel good in the 90s. A pretty happy decade, I think. And again, we had continued uh, prosperity, shall we say. <laughs> and we were pretty much at peace there going through that decade. I mean, I might have been flare ups here and there, but it was a pretty positive time. And again, one trend, one era, can lead into another. And then unfortunately, things will change. You had 9-11, and then a few years later, you had COVID. So you got things that would come up, and we're feeling good, and then bang, bang. Just brings us down, brings us through a tough, dark period. But people bounce back. I mean, we've been through a lot of things in history, so. It, the resilience is there. I mean, we got out of the recession. The 1980s was a pretty cool time, I thought. Interest rates were about 14%. What's that? Interest rates were about 14%, so it was oh, a great yeah. investment, but good luck buying a house. 
And it crashed, though. We had the jump bonds. Remember that in the 1980s? So he had some bank problems going on. And again, it was a rough period in the financial world. Okay, um, Pee Wee Herman. Can't forget him. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> interesting, all I can say. The rise and fall of Pee Wee Herman. Oh yeah, Sandy just gets up on the top of the world and then they can just crash too. I mean, fame can, fame can be damaging. 24 hour news, they had all these uh, commentary programs, uh, CNN, Fox News, ESPN, uh, MSNBC, and they have 24 hours of TV, right? Cable. That's what brought it about. And he also had MTV, 24 hours of music. And MTV, like I say, I think music was so big in the 80s, is because of MTV. When did that start? Was it, it was 1980s. It was an 80s. Started with the Bubbles, a, a group that sang Video Killed the Radio Star. Yeah, it was a great song. And that was the first tune that they played, and from there on out, it's all music history. Okay. Oh gosh, Dr. Ruth. Remember Dr. Ruth Westenheimer? Yeah, she was yeah. Advice column. Well, she passed away just recently. But people are still pushing the limits on conversational material. Oh gosh. Sally Jesse Raphael, the Oh yeah, Sally Jesse Raphael and then Robert Rivera, where they had exposés and course. Yeah. It ushered in the 90s with Ricky Lake and all these controversial TV programs that some people felt should not be broadcasted. Yeah. <laughs> Remember We Are the World with Band Aid? And then came Farm Aid, right? So those were, again, group efforts, worldwide efforts in history of the tragedies going on, right, of the starvation and poverty, the people got together and that created a phenomenon, right? That's, you know, again, history driving culture. And then Hands Across America, remember that? That was 86, I think it was. All right, uh, Mount St. Helens. Uh, kind of woke us up as far as natural disasters go, right? And Chernobyl, that was a nuclear accident. And I understand that lately now, since it's been so long ago, that people are thinking of nuclear power once again. Maybe a new generation that might have more. That mess brought about your marketing again with the Pepsi Center on Saturday Night Live. Ah, yeah. Yeah. trying to find out things did you remember? Oh, here we go. Movie The Day After. Remember that? Yeah. Okay, that's another nuclear explosion, war, and we were kind of uh, still in that Cold War mentality, but they showed the movie The Day After that was like quite remarkable as far as chill factor goes. Tammy Faye Baker, remember the makeup? <laughs> She was, well, she was out in the spotlight once again. Pound puppies, that was a popular toy. I got a small version of it. Remember these? Uh, yeah. That, I was thinking, maybe, when I saw that, I was thinking Beanie Babies. They were the age cells growing up. Um, um, I think a little later, maybe down later down the line, there was a mad rush to get those online. Yeah, they Oh, yeah, yeah. Originally, they were, yeah. Well, these Happy Meals were marketing opportunities, right? You sell the toy a week in there, right? Thank you for getting my neurons all stirred up. Was that called Pound Puppy? Pound Puppy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the swatches, the real fancy watch? And the blizzard of 1985, it's local, but everybody remember that blizzard? We shut down for about two weeks because the snow was up to here on the roads. <laughs> and then the summer of 88, they had that heat wave and the power went off. I remember that, wow. Crash in 1987, the stock market took a dive. 
primary number of that was the junk bond thing that caused that, or was it a housing crisis? I'd have to look that up. Like there, one day it really tanked. Okay, I'm gonna like have questions because I think I talked long enough. Anybody? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yes. Did you go over that whole sign there? This one, because I didn't hear from her. Oh, thank you. Yes, famous phrases. Where's the beef? That lady was a hit. Where's the beef? Oh, remember the clapper? Clap on, clap off, light on, light on. something with her husband as an enterprise who knows what that was that she made a fortune with I saw one at the thrift store read it Thigh Master. Thigh Master. made a fortune because they wouldn't help her there so she went out yes. with her husband you gotta mention a thigh master <laughs> I'm looking to get one. I want to bring it to my list. Rise thing. of the info version, right? I will say that oh, yes. Shake It Up is ruined for me because that was always played when we did our aerobics in gym class. Because I'm a child of the 80s. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I'm the only one that lived through it in my teenage years. But, mm -hmm. um, there are songs that have been ruined for me because they were used to endorse activities that you did every day. And now I can't perform activities without thinking of some that are bad, some songs that are really bad. Some, <laughs> some, some songs that are really bad. So the car shake it up isn't a bad song, but I can't listen to it without thinking of aerobics class anymore. Oh, the with, cars. Oh, the group, the right. cars. So yeah. the guitars and you know, with the leg warmers, and yeah, it's a bad memory. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they are using some of the '80s songs again on commercials. They're they're not making up their own jingles nowadays. It seems they're just trying to use music that's borrowed from another era to draw nostalgia. Yeah. And yes. is that original or is that not original? I mean... Yeah, it's all, it comes to changes. But it's... It is retarded. But on the radio, though, I am hearing commercials coming back for jingles. Some of the um, O'Reilly, which is an automobile, shop that's coming to Buffalo area, they advertise them a lot, and then, what's the other one? Uh, uh, look good, feel great, Buffalo Dental World. So you have the jingle is coming back on the radio, which I think is kind of neat because you do not forget those channels. And it's good marketing, I think, because 
Is it your word? You don't remember it? Right? So. Retro salad. Right. Okay, any more questions? Anybody have anything? Yeah, sure. They're also very good cartoon, like all the Chipmunks and animated movies, like the Chipmunk Adventure. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that started with that, um, the basketball movie. What's that with the cartoon rabbit in it? Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the characters. Uh, Space Jam. Space Jam, yeah. Space Jam. Great movie. So, yeah, you use these original things and you create some really, like, oh, wow, this has got to, i got to go see this, right? So you got something familiar. That's what, I wrote this from an online program. Uh, Mr. Gerhowitz is a professor, and he teaches popular culture, which I would love someday to do that, but I only have a degree, so we can't, you know, full master's degree. But he says, popular culture is iconic and represents an era to many demographics, because everybody knows of all ages, they all know where's the beef, right? So it was so popular, it became iconic, right? That's 80s you think of. And what brings people together is a common event or a common experience. So your music, your fashion, the food, of course. Any food fads from the 80s other than what I mentioned? Well, the microwave was the other side. Oh, yeah. Microwavable oh, food, yeah. The hot dogger. Hot pockets, yeah. The hot dogger. Oh, the hot dogger, yeah, right. <laughs> so, did you take that one? Yeah, so you can take a picture of your hot dog and plug it into two metal ends and the electric. Eat it. <laughs> I had a friend in college who made one with forks and wires. It was very simple. Oh, wow. Very simple. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. Some things are fads. They come and go. But some things are, like I say, iconic and they sort of last. Like, I wonder if there will always be Pepsi versus Coke. Oh, I think so. Yeah, the Cola Wars, I think, are going to keep going on and on. It all started back then, right? And the Apple Jr., the Fry Daddy. Fry Daddy! Where you can make your chicken wings at home. Yes. Especially Western New York, where chicken wings are king, right? But when did the argument, ranch dressing versus blue cheese, start? Probably in the 80s. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Well, it's probably a Buffalo thing because you know, go to another state and do they do chicken wings? Probably not like Buffalo does. Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. They do. They do now. Well. What's that? They have some of the best pizza and wings. Oh, yeah. Anchor Bar Buffalo. Yeah. Which, did that start in the 80s? When did the Anchor Bar come around? Oh, that was way back. Uh, I don't know the exact date, but I remember when I was working at Deaconess in 1975, I left, and the first time I got to go, the Anchor Bar was the night, my last night there. I got, wow, was that good. And now they have another anchor bar, I guess, franchise out in the suburbs somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so again, with the increased communication and the people being more connected. But one thing we've lost, though, with popular culture is the common experiences. Because when we had TV, right, oh, yeah. everybody could watch the same three channels or four <laughs> channels, right? You yeah. all know about what's on. But nowadays, it's streaming, right? Not everybody watches everything that's out there because there's so much now and we become fragmented. And we've lost that commonality where we were, again, a common experience yeah. is what drives our culture and our culture is becoming different categories and like, what's going to happen now? I mean... Even cable made that easier, but now that there are so many sources, you're right, there are mm -hmm. programs talked about that. Even if they explain, oh no, I got that one from Amazon, and they, oh, I have Prime, or I got Yeah, they all got different uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. providers. And the same thing with the internet. Everybody goes to a different uh, provider there, too. 
But see, the one thing I think that united us that was really cool was the eclipse. We were all in that together. See? And that's for a moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we didn't see the whole the sun come out, but yeah, we were focusing on that one thing. Everybody knew when it was gonna happen. And collective. Yes. Weather report. Yeah. And of course, locally, again, a weather event will bring us together, but it's not how it used to be when you had a fad come out and everybody knew about it. So how are we going to get us back together again? That's the question. What's the future got? as far as what's popular. Oh, it's going to be an interesting question. When did the cordless phone come out? Do you know? Well, I think that was the 80s when they had that great big phone you could use in the car. Okay, not, not necessarily oh. cell phones, but cordless phones. Because oh, yeah, like the landline without the phone yeah. being, oh, gosh. I would say that was probably the 80s. Yeah, I would think, I remember, yeah. 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 Because I still have a landline. It's not a copper wire landline. It's void. But right. it's a landline. Mm -hmm. You still have a princess phone. I do still have a princess phone. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's going back about the 60s. Yeah, the 60s. Yeah. It's a great sound. Well, if I do the program on the 60s, maybe we can bring yeah. that. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to do other decades. So anybody else wants me to do a decade, I do from post war to now. I do popular culture uh, talks, and again, like I did today, I talk, tie the history in with the things that are happening out there and why people are doing what they're doing at that time. So if anybody would like to hear any of these talks, I even do the 2020s, even though we're partway through, I can still offer that and tie it in with maybe the decade before. So COVID has a history all its own, and that kind of drove the early 2020s, unfortunately. But yeah, we've come out of it with different ideas. Yeah. What about the 2010, the late 2010s? 2010s. Yeah, I can do that one. OK. All right. Well, thank you for coming, and thank you. I appreciate it. So thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, just a quick little PSA, a couple of events coming up. Uh, this Saturday is our next guest speaker. Uh, Brandon Brooks from the Genesee Country Village and Museum will be coming. And we'll be talking about the diabolically striped garment, about how stripes delineated fashion and society. Uh, so it should be very interesting. It'll be at 11 o'clock on Saturday. And then we actually have a second Java with Joe for August. We have a special one. Uh, Bob Balkowski will be coming next Friday, uh, August 30th at 9 o'clock. And he'll be talking about Batavia's rocket car. Uh, and he may be bringing some special people who were either involved or had family members involved in the, the process of bringing it back. So uh, be sure to come for that. And then there's a whole bunch of things lined up for September and the rest of the year. We've already got our ghost walks out there. We're already planting Wonderland trees. So we are packed up, up for the rest of the year. So. And grab a cookie, please. Thank you so much. Right.